um i ended up seeing people they ended up um they ended up buying mansions and cars all cash and i was wondering like you know how are people doing that and my parents they were like yo they they're going overseas as overseas government contractors i never knew what it was i didn't know how to do it but i was like you know that's my goal and that's pretty much all i kind of set out to do like from you know, some of the jobs is like hey like if something happens you know you need to be there and be aware but a lot of the jobs are, are mostly like laid back right you you do your task um you know you might answer some emails but outside of that you know you're pretty much kind of like relaxing for the rest of the day so you know i never try to tell people like oh you know you're going to get into tech you're going to be working five hours like you see some people say i say expect to work 40 hours but like you know actual actual work you know it's not that much yeah. right when it comes to tech it's not usually 40 hours worth of actual work to do okay. it's just not there's some people who go overseas and you know they blow all their money right, right? They, they they living it up they traveling all around the world spending on you know women and stuff like that mm -hmm. but you know if you you're smart with your money i swear like three years working overseas you'll be completely debt free wow. um you'll have a lot of money saved and invested and you you'll have a completely different life once you get back to the states hey, hey wait 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 i know you want to watch this next video but listen if you are an entrepreneur business coach business consultant or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story i need you to text me right now my book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. So welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, the U.S. tech market accounts for 35% of the total world market. In 2022, 264,500 tech industry jobs added to the market and the industry is expected to grow by 5.4%. In 2023, this industry employed roughly 12.2 million workers in 2020. If you're looking for a career change today, we have a GovTech IT professional with a background in computer science, a tech enthusiast with over 15 years of GovTech experience. She is dedicated to helping more millennials break into tech here today to give us a million dollars worth of tech game. Welcome Simone Bees in the building. Yeah, thanks, What's up, thanks. Simone? How you feeling? Thank you. Thank you. You got a lot of energy, man. You got a lot of energy. Energy. Listen, like, listen. Like Thanks for inviting me out. No, nah, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure because, like, I think that uh, one of the, one of the reasons I was excited about having you come on is because we live in a day and age where everybody's focusing on entrepreneurship. Everybody's like, "Yo, you know, quit your job. Yep. You know, what I'm saying, go cold turkey, make a million dollars, and just be an entrepreneur, right?" Um, and the truth of the matter is that. Um, entrepreneurship is not for everybody, no. right? Everybody doesn't have the stomach for it. Everybody doesn't have the hustle for it. Everybody doesn't have a discipline for it. Like there's a lot that comes with, you know, entrepreneurship, right? But in the same time, the reason why people want to be, you know, go into entrepreneurship is because of the money potential, right? They feel like being your own boss is the only way you can make a lot of money. And then I ran across somebody who's in government tech, who's killing it at such a high level, who's showing the receipts. And, and, and to be honest, Simone, you're making a lot, way more money than a lot of the entrepreneurs I know. Yeah, yeah. And, I and, mean, that's how it is. You yeah. Know? The people, they, they think that entrepreneurship is the only way to do it. But honestly, tech has been the way for a long time. And because of social media, people are now finally starting to see like, oh, this is something I can actually do. 
without going to school and getting a degree and something I can do and make six figures and work remotely and also work around the world. And think about this, right? You're talking about government tech. Yep. So that's another piece that adds, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, sugar to the pie, if you will, and makes it even more sweeter is the fact that this is the government which means that the government has trillions of... Look, they just gave Ukraine... I don't want to get there. But they just gave Ukraine trillions... You know, they some more money. Yeah, yeah. They got money for wars but can't feed the poor. But that's another story, yeah, right? Right, right. Um, but that's before we get started, for those who don't know, who is Simone Bees? Yeah, so my name is Simone B, also named, also known as Bees. I'm from Arlington, Virginia, and I got into GovTech at a very young age. So, you know, I'm somebody I grew up just playing basketball every day and video games every day, and I was really just trying to skip school. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you had a vocational school in your school district, mm -hmm. but basically we had a vocational school where if you went to it, you'd get out of your regular classes. You could go there every other day. So I found out they had this easy program there where you just go in, just work on worksheets and you can get a tech certification. Now, I didn't know that, you know, it was going to get me where I am today, but I ended up getting my CompTIA A plus certification and I got my first tech internship at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So I did all of that basically off of just skipping class, right? I didn't need a degree, right? I, of course, I have a degree now. I end up going to college on a basketball scholarship. So if you go to college, you you have to do, you have to pick a major, right. right? People ask me that all the time. They're like, well, you tell people you don't need a degree, but you have one. I'm like, well, yeah, I went to school on a basketball scholarship, right? You just can't play ball and not not go to class, yeah. right? So, um, so pretty much that's how I got into it and... Um, really for me, like GovTech is all that I know because I'm from the DMV. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much you know about the DC area, but everybody around there works for the government in some way, shape or form. So whether you work for the federal government or you're a government contractor um, or you work for a, a subcontractor or somebody like that, you're doing something government related. Uh, and that's how, you know, most black people that are doing well, uh, PG County is the wealthiest black county. Majority of people are working for the government. So um, that's really all I knew. Right. So um, I ended up seeing people. They ended up. Um, they ended up buying mansions and cars all cash. And I was wondering like, you know, how are people doing that? Mm -hmm. And my parents, they were like, yo, they, they're going overseas as overseas government contractors. I never knew what it was. I didn't know how to do it, but I was like, you know, that's my goal. And that's pretty much all I kind of set out to do. Like from the age of 16 was like, yeah, one day I'm gonna be an overseas government contractor and getting that tech uh, certification started me out on the right foot. Wow. And so I'm a Hooper, mm -hmm. they call me Shaq. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. Um, and I'm a, I'm a hooper for life. Yep. You gave up hooping to, to be a techie, though. I did. Talk to me about that. I did. I, I had no choice. So, you, you know, if you... Like for me, I never really was into school. Like I would sleep through my classes. Um, I really did not pay attention during class at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I got to college and you know, the college programs, they, they ran it, it was a D3 school, but mm -hmm. they ran it like a D1 program. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking in the morning, you have practice, midday, you got individuals, um, in the afternoon, you got study hall and then you got, you might have practice again. So I was not able to balance my, um, playing basketball and balance actually doing well in school. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I went to school for computer science. So I never had programmed in my life, right? I chose a very easy path to get into tech, which was just um, entry level, like help desk work, right? So help desk IT support. So when I got into college and we were doing computer programming, I didn't know what was going on. So I was lost in class. I didn't know what was happening. Um, and then I looked up and I had like a 2.1 GPA. Mm. So at that point, you know, I had to make a decision, right? Am I going to continue to try to play basketball and then struggle with my grades? Or was I going to switch and just focus only on tech? Because yeah. I ended up going on to Google and I saw like the average salary of a WNBA player was 45K. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, like I never had looked it up. I'm 18 years old. Yeah. Never looked up a salary a day in my life. Right. So I looked it up. I'm like, dang, you know, 45K. All right. Well, what like what's this software engineering about? Mm -hmm. Right. So looked at software engineers and they were making 100K. Mm. 
So, you know, for me, it was a no brainer. I, you know, I went to the coach the next day. I said, hey, thanks for the opportunity, but I'm going to have to focus on tech. Like mm. I, I really had no choice at that right. point. Like it, it just didn't make sense. Why would I, you know, take a huge pay cut for potentially making it to the WNBA? Right. And then there's a lot of great players who play D1 who never make it to the WNBA. Right. So, you know, it's it, it was really just I just had to make a switch. Right. Wow. That to me, that was guaranteed. Like, OK, if I can get this degree. I can make 100K, and that was it. And so, which, which in hindsight was a great decision, right? Because, <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, you know, seeing um, not only, you know, like, 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 like I love when somebody walks into their passion. The one thing I love is when somebody gets to a level of success, they don't just keep the success to themselves, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and again, that's why, that was one of the reasons why I was like, all right, yeah, we definitely got to have Simone up here. Because not only have you, like, you know, you make the salary of 30 to 40 at WNBA players yeah. now, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so not, not only have you had success yourself, but you, like, I'm talking about you eat, breathe, and sleep trying to give information to people yeah. to get them. Like, that's all you do. Like, you're like, yo, I, do. <laughs> I, I need you to know the money is sweet on this side, and I need you to get in here. Uh, you, you know, you're connecting with big corporations. You're like, listen, I need, I need to get this word out, and 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 that's commendable. Um, can anybody get into tech though? Yeah, yeah, anybody can get into tech, right? So if you're if you're willing to learn a new skill, you can definitely get into tech. Yeah. So the thing about it is, at the beginning, it's going to be hard because it's completely foreign to you, right? But if it was easy everybody would be doing it overnight, but yeah. it just takes a little bit of time. You can learn the tech skills within three months and get your first tech job. Mm. Yeah, and what, what what would you say is like the qualifications for somebody to get into tech? Yeah, so you just need a high school degree or mm. a GED, yeah. um, and then you can get one tech certification. So one of the easiest like entry level roles you can get, which is help desk IT support, mm. right? Um, you can get the Google IT certification, or you can get the CompTIA A plus certification, which is what I got back at sixteen, right? That's how I got in. Mm. And then, and then, and then you, you know, so now you get the certification. What's the first step, right? Like, let's say I, I, before before we get there, is it is it is it for you know, is it only for young people? Can old people do it? Like, what's yeah, yeah. the what's the age? You know, like like what's the age? range of somebody who wants to just start getting yeah, into tech. Like literally anybody could do it, right? Like me, I started at 16, but I've seen people as old as 50, 60 years old wow. transition into tech. Wow. So whenever you're ready, you can get in. And then especially with GovTech, man, I used to work with this older guy. He was probably about 70 something. Wow. He was on an oxygen tank. They could not fire him. So that, like literally he's sleeping at his desk all day on an oxygen tank. And they can't fire them because that's age discrimination. Right. Right. So uh, I believe age discrimination starts at like age 40. Mm. So once you once you're 40 years old, I mean you're you're a protected class anyway. War. Uh -oh, so look, <laughs> all my ancestors out there. Oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. I saw uh this is just a side aside. Yeah. I saw a meme where somebody was saying that anybody was born 1990 to 1999. Was like was like an older person, so they was like, so they was like, well, if if 1990 to 1999 is an older person, then then what's anybody who's born between 1980 and 1989? They was like, oh my, are oh, you talking about my ancestors? <laughs> <laughs> so all my ancestors out there, y'all good <laughs> because y'all can get y'all can get a job and it's age discrimination if they get rid of you. Yep. And so like so so I so I have a I have a gentleman that I know right. Um, he is 51 years old. Um, you know, I think was doing IT, you know, for, for a very long time. Um, you know, recently got laid off, lost his job, um, and is looking to get back on his feet, right? Mm -hmm. Has the experience. Uh, what would you say is his first step? How, how could he get into GovTech? What's the first step he needs yeah, to do? Yeah, first step, I would say best thing to do to get into GovTech is get your CompTIA Security Plus certification, mm. uh, just because that is a requirement to work on government systems, right? And once you get that certification, that allows you to be qualified to start applying to the different jobs and then even get the opportunity to get a government security clearance. Now, that's a whole nother ball game there, right? You get a government security clearance, you're going to be making six figures easy for the rest of your life, right? Um, you can work in the States or you can work overseas. It just depends on how you want to do it. But yeah, definitely start out with the security plus 
and then he can start looking for jobs that if he wants to get a clearance, right, he can find a job that gives him a clearance. And that makes him so much more in demand because only one in five people have a government clearance. Wow. So, you know, they can't just find people off the street. So once you have one, you're always somebody who the government and government contractors are looking to hire. And and, and what's the what's the um, you know, you, you, you mentioned uh, earlier about being able to work remotely. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, how many hours, like somebody gets a government tech job, is it, is it like strenuous? Is it stressed out? Are you like stuck at the computer, yeah. you know, making sure, you know, watching things like, like what, what's the day in the life of a government tech employee? Yeah. Yeah. So it depends on what type of tech role that you have. You know, some of the jobs is like, Hey, like if something happens, you know, you need to be there and be aware. But a lot of the jobs are, are mostly like laid back, right? You, you do your task. Um, you know, you might answer some emails, but outside of that, you know, you're pretty much kind of like relaxing for the rest of the day. So, you know, I never try to tell people like, oh, you know, you're going to get into tech. You're going to be working five hours. Like you see some people say, I say expect to work 40 hours, but like, you know, actual, actual work, you know, it's not that much. Yeah. Right. When it comes to tech, it's not usually 40 hours worth of actual work to do. Okay. It's just not. <laughs> and, and, and so, so, so there, there's, uh. I guess government overseas contracting. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Look, look, dude, yeah. look, look at that smile. Wait, hold on. Look at that smile. That got to be something spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, overseas government contracting is like for me that that's changed everything for me, mm. right? So, working overseas, I lived overseas for five years, from the age of twenty four to twenty nine. Mm. And when you work as an overseas government contractor, you're making six figures and your money's mostly tax free. Mm. So the IRS, they have this um, law or exclusion, it's called the foreign income exclusion. Mm. So your first $107,000 is completely tax free. Mm, that's, there we go, yeah, there you know? we go, that, there <laughs> yep. we go. And it, but on top of that, the companies are paying for your housing, mm. so you're living for free, your food is free, mm. transportation's free, mm. and your travel's free. Wow. So literally, I was able to save between 80 to 90% of my salary while I was living five overseas years. for five years. That's why you rich, rich. <laughs> Look, you came back to the States rich, rich. Okay. Yeah, I came back to the States like loaded, honestly. And yeah. then on top of that, you know, I was investing my money, right? right. So there are some people who go overseas and, you know, they blow all their money, right? right. They, they, they living it up. They traveling all around the world, spending on, you know, women and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're smart with your money, I swear, like three years working overseas, you'll be completely debt free. Wow. Um, you'll have a lot of money saved and invested and you, you'll have a completely different life once you get back to the states and and is it is is the process the same is it like getting a, a you know government yeah. contract the job here yeah yeah so it's the same process so um really with these jobs you would just be looking at uh, government contractors that have jobs overseas so um there's different companies like uh, raytheon northrop grumman uh, Lockheed Martin, Lidos. There's a lot of different companies that have jobs located overseas. So if you go to their website, um, you'll see and you can apply to their different jobs. But yeah, I mean, the process is pretty much the same. I mean, you get the job. Uh, they typically pay you a bonus to go overseas. So mm -hmm. like the highest bonus I got to go overseas was like 20 K. Mm -hmm. So they, they gave me a $20,000 relocation package and you know, I pocketed most of that money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's the best thing about working overseas. You're getting all these bonuses and uplifts and you're pocketing majority of the money. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of opportunity for you. And then once you go overseas, you have experience that nobody else has. So, you know, you're always in demand. Um, and I didn't say this earlier about kind of like what makes GovTech so, spe so special. Um, GovTech hiring is up 36% mm. compared to <clears throat> compared to big tech mm. where, you know, you see layoffs happen in big tech all the time and government tech hiring is up and they need more people. So mm. they need people with uh, security plus certification. They need people with clearances. So it's the best time to get in, honestly. Yeah, yeah. What, what made you... Um, like, what was your motivation around teaching GovTech, right? So, like, you know, like I said earlier, like, most people, they get the bag and they just like, all right, I'm cool, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was that motivation? Um, other races, honestly, they don't want us to know about it. Mm. Like, when I was working overseas, I met this one guy. He said he got his first overseas government contract back in the 70s. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I met him in 2018. Wow. So he had been doing it since the 70s. Wow, loaded, loaded. Loaded. I'm, Build, building that generational wealth. Yes, I swear. Like, majority of people that I work with overseas were millionaires. Right. Like, I mean, it's, it's really hard to not become a millionaire if you're making six figures and it's tax-free. And right. I'm not I'm not talking like 100K, right? Like, right. I was I was making 225000 wow. overseas, right? Wow. And keeping... 90% of my money, wow. right? So you can make a lot. Um, and then the salaries, they go up to like 400K Sheesh. overseas even today, right? Sheesh. So yeah, you can make a lot of money overseas and in the States. So you were talking about, you know, remote jobs earlier. I work remote currently, mm. right? So I work for a cybersecurity gov tech startup mm. and I work remote and I'm making 275 a year. Wow. So yeah, I get, um, you know, base salaries 175. I get a uh, 10% bonus and I get stocks. So I get equity in the company too. Wow. And I work 100% remote. Wow. Yeah. And so you could, and so wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> About to give me a GovTech job. Right? Because so, so, so now, you know, working 100% remote. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, and are they clocking your time or is it like you, you just have, tasks to do like like, yeah. like how does that work yeah we just have tasks to do like we don't even have a time card mm. yeah <laughs> so you get the you get so so he, here's the things you need to do for the week yep you get it done whenever yeah and then what and, and the rest the rest of the time you can do whatever you want yeah you know i, I always have my phone with me right yeah. so i always have slack connected always have my um email connected right so if i need to hop on a call or do anything i'm always ready to go yeah but you're not. But you're not stuck to it. no one's cubicle. No. No. No one's. So you could. You could. No. I've been traveling all month. Yeah. <laughs> so. So I've been like probably for the last three or four years. Like I. I travel the entire month of August. I've, I've been doing that for a while. Of course, when I was overseas, I was off of work. But right. like now, you know, I'm traveling. I don't really even have to take PTO. But yeah, I've been traveling all all of August. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's my birthday wow. month. And yeah. so what? So. It got to be more to it. Or, or is it that simple? So it, it really is that simple, right? I don't want people to overcomplicate it. So yeah. the main thing you need to worry about is getting your first tech job, yeah. right? Once you get your first tech job, then you can uh, you can have the companies pay for more certifications. You can have them pay for more trainings for you. And if you want to get a degree, you can have them pay for a degree as well. Mm. So that way, you know, you're continuing to improve your skills. And then also it's going to allow you to increase your salary because you're stacking more certifications on top. You know, you have a degree that helps you make more money. Um, but yeah, you know, main thing you need to worry about is just getting that very first tech job. Wow. 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 And so... You have a five day experience that's coming up, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I appreciate, um, you know, when people share their knowledge, especially in a five day setting, because, you know, yeah, you can learn a lot during a webinar, uh, but a webinar is an hour, two hours tops. Mm. Um, and that you really can't transform or you really can't get a result in an hour, right? Right. Um, talk about your, your five day challenge. Hey, hey, but even on my workshops, yeah. look, so for people, they, they notice me all the time, right? Yeah. Cause TikTok, Instagram, stuff like that. So I, I went to the mystics game. Mm -hmm. I was leaving out of the mystics game and this lady, she stopped me. She said, Hey, she was like, I just want to say thank you. I went to your workshop and I actually ended up getting an interview for a job that was sponsoring a government clearance just wow. from going to your workshop. Wow. Yeah. So like. So workshop, work, the workshop you, you can't work. get the sauce. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah okay. I'm not holding anything back. Yeah. But like on the five day challenge, it's, it's even more, yeah. right? So in the during the five day challenge, um, I'm helping you figure out which certifications you should get so mm. you can stack the certs, figure out which tech niche that you you want to focus on, right? Because that's something that a lot of people don't know, right? When they first get into tech or they're interested in tech, they're like, hey, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to do cybersecurity. I don't know if I want to do cloud. I don't know if I want to do software development, right? So I help them figure out what's the best route for them to where they can get into tech uh, within three to six months and not have to go back to school and get a degree, just get their foot in the door, mm. right? Um, and then I also help them figure out how they can completely skip the corporate ladder. So I just turned 31, right? And you see, I have 15 years of GovTech experience, mm. but by the age of 24, 
I was already making, you know, 150 and then by 25 of that 225,000. Wow. So, you know, I've figured out at a young age how to, you know, not sit around waiting for raises and I teach people how to utilize those same skills for when they get into tech as well. Mm, I love it. Uh, how, how is, um, you know, artificial intelligence mm. going to affect GovTech? Honestly, I don't think it's going to affect GovTech anytime soon. Mm. So the government, I don't know how much you know about their processes, but everything's slow. Mm. So the government, they have their own cloud as well. It's called GovCloud. Mm. And you can work on that program too, right? So Amazon, they've reached out to me to work on the program, but I don't want to work in office. Mm. But so GovCloud itself took about 15 years to come out, right? Mm. How long has the cloud been out? Right. For forever. Ever, yeah, it took 15 yeah. years for government to get GovCloud, wow. right? So imagine how long it's going to take them to get their proprietary AI mm. um, infrastructure and AI platform, mm. right? And when it comes to the government information, it could be classified so they can't just put it into ChatGPT mm. or any old public AI system because you don't want, you know, government secrets getting out. Mm. So for GovTech, I don't see AI impacting it at all anytime soon. Like wow. I wouldn't even really worry about it much. And then on top of that too, is with the government systems, we need actual people, American citizens to work on these systems, not like a robot, not right. a program. Like we need actual people. Wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so that, so that's interesting, right? Listen, listen, insiders, this is interesting because, um, everybody's afraid of AI. Yep. Because, you know, it is said that AI is going to replace about 300 million jobs, mm -hmm. right? Um, people are afraid uh, about the economy, period, right? Because you got, we're going into an election year. During an election year, things get crazy with jobs, right? Mm -hmm. um, people are, are not knowing, you know, what's going to happen with the economy. You know, I think we're in a recession, but nobody's publicly saying it, mm -hmm. right? Because if they do say it, people get start to panic, start to hold back some. Um, jobs are being lost every day. But GovTech is adding jobs. Adding jobs. It's increasing. <laughs> yes, yeah. So that's, I, I truly believe that GovTech is the most recession-proof, mm. layoff-proof, and now AI-proof career that you could be in. Wow. Hands down, wow. right? The hiring's up. We need actual U.S. citizens. So that's something that big tech is facing, too. A lot of nobody really talks about this, yeah. but uh, all the other tech industries, a lot of the jobs are being outsourced. Mm. Right? right. There, There is no outsourcing in GovTech. Right. You have to be an American citizen. I think that's the beauty of it, though, yeah. right? Because at the end of the day, like you said, it's AI proof. It's recession proof. Um, they're adding jobs. It's not just low paying jobs. These are six pay. figure jobs, yeah. right? So these are high paying jobs. Um, and then there's this security where, um, and, and, and that makes sense. You can't use a computer because you can't control, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The computer, you need an actual person. You need actual uh, human hands. Mm -hmm. You have information that the world cannot know. Exactly. And so you need security clearance. You cannot give exactly. a computer security clearance. Exactly. And so and so you are actually um, protected, if you will. Yeah. It's wow. layers on layers of protection, wow. right? So like, um, you know, I've never been laid off. Nobody in my family has ever been laid off. But if you happen to get laid off in the GovTech industry, you will have a new job within three to four weeks wow. because you have a government clearance you have the right certifications and the right experience, right? So wow. there's really nothing to worry about. Like literally if you go and you start applying to different jobs, um, you can get five to six different job offers within a two, three week span, like wow. no problem. So wow. even this is gonna be my um, second challenge that I'm doing, right? My first challenge, I had somebody who attended it and he reached out to me. Um, I actually ran into him at Carter Cofield's um, what was it? His sneaker ball. Mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. So I ran into him there and he's like, Hey, I got a, I got an update for you. I came to your challenge. Um, and he said he got two job offers wow. and both of them were sponsoring clearances. One was from Boeing and one was from a smaller government contractor company called Eagle X. Wow. So our iron Eagle X. So he got two job offers within a month of attending the challenge. Wow. Right. And both of them were sponsoring clearances. Wow. So, you know, it's something that can definitely be done. And once you get the clearance, once you get the right certifications, I mean, it's pretty much smooth sailing from there. Wow, 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 man! And, and so, and so, you know, what do you do now, right? As a, you know, 
young person who's been making six figures since your 20s. Yeah. Um, I know you said you've invested in like, like what have what have you been doing? Um, you know, with this level of freedom, what have you been doing to build, you know, build your wealth? Yeah, I, mostly I've been investing in real estate. Yeah. I also got in crypto very, very early. Mm. So my first government contract overseas was in Japan. So I got into Bitcoin when it was sixteen hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. So wow. Yeah. So just to give you an idea, yeah, I've been in crypto for a while. Um yeah, you rich, 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 rich for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and now I'm getting brand deals too. So I mean it's it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah. But you know, blessed, very thankful. Um, but yeah, you know, just really for me, real estate. Uh, stocks and crypto. That's mostly what I focus on. Yeah. I did have um, other side businesses. Like I had a trucking business. I ended up shutting down. Pandemic hit. You know, yeah. it was truckers. They were quitting left and right. So yep, I'm like, 100%. okay, I'm, yep. yeah, I'm done with that. Um, but I had a vending machine business too, which it made money. It was profitable, but it was just too much time effort for me. Yeah. But really what I've been doing is just, you know, saving and investing. That's yeah. it. Right. And I, I like to focus mostly now on real estate and stocks. And I don't know how much you talk about crypto, but to me, I feel like we're at the bottom of the bear market mm -hmm. and I think the bull market is about to start. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been reinvesting back heavily into crypto as well. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. And, and talk, talk, a, talk a little bit about your program, right? Because you you mentioned, um, you know, you 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 have a program that's that's teaching right on the mm -hmm. education side of GovTech. Uh, but it's not just courses. Can you talk yeah. about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So so right now I, I have my um, GovTech career blueprint. So it's for people looking to, to learn those entry-level tech skills, right? So if you don't know anything about tech, you don't know anything about computers, um, I'm teaching you those technical skills with my IT support engineer um, technical course. So that includes hands-on labs. That includes me uh, giving you lectures and teaching you and quizzes. And then on top of that, inside of the blueprint, you also get access to um, all of everything that I know about GovTech, right? So I've been in GovTech for 15 years. So I teach you everything you need to know to get into the industry, get your clearances and stay in the industry as well. Yeah. What, what, what would you say is the biggest mistake people make? So when they trying to transition to get into Gov, GovTech, what's the biggest mistake? Is one, jumping around too much. Mm. And then two, um, taking bad job opportunities, mm. right? So sometimes people, they might take um, a job opportunity with a company that either does not pay well, or it might be like a very short term contract or a temporary contract that won't lead to full time employment. Mm. Um, I would say there's like there's a website called clearancejobs.com. They have 70,000 jobs listed on mm. there. Right. Wow. So, I mean, there's so many jobs available. And then with the federal government, too, it's like you might as well go for a full time position mm. instead of going for something temporary where they're only looking for work for maybe like a month or two. Got it, got mm -hmm. it, got it, got it. And 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 then like clearancejobs.com is like jobs that you need clearance, right? Government you, you, clearance? Or? You don't. Oh, you gotcha. don't. So that's something a lot of people don't know. You actually can find jobs that are sponsoring clearance on clearancejobs.com. Mm. So people think you have to have a clearance. You don't. Um, once you go into clearance jobs, they actually redirect you directly to the company's website. Wow. So you can just use it as literally like a search engine to find those jobs sponsoring clearances. Yeah. And what's the percentage of, of like black and brown people in tech? It's in tech or in gov tech? So, so oh. I, so I know, I know yeah. tech is low. It's, it's, it's even more lower in gov tech. Wow. That's why I'm trying to help us get in. Wow. Yeah. And because they put out an article, um, I believe it was Raytheon and Lockheed Martin. They're both saying that, Hey, we're trying to hire more diverse, diverse employees. Yeah. Right. So they want to hire more of us, but I'm, I'm telling you, we don't even know that this is out here. Wow. We have no idea. Right. Because if you don't live in an area that has a, a huge government presence, presence, like like the DMV, yeah. how will you know about GovTech? How will you know about all these opportunities? Yeah, yeah. And and like, man, and so, cause I'm like, man, I'm I'm about to I'm about, I'm about to tell everybody like, y'all need to get into this, this this GovTech thing because at the end of the day, like with all of the you know resources, the reasons, like why wouldn't somebody kind of get in? Like, like is is there a um you know, you know, obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, right. You have to, uh, you know, have a high school diploma, you said mm -hmm. at least, um, 
can you have a can you have a criminal record so you can't have yeah. a criminal record? So so when it comes to the criminal record, it's very case by case, right? Okay. So if you have a felony, it's going to depend on when you got that felony okay. and what it was for, right? So I would say if you do have a felony, you know, can't guarantee that you'll get a clearance, right? Yeah. Um, but you could still get one of the uh, GovTech jobs that don't require clearance, maybe just a public trust. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have a misdemeanor, you definitely could still get a clearance. But again, it's what what was the misdemeanor for? When was it? And then also another thing that people need to know is like, it, it is a complete lifestyle change, right? So if you are somebody who, you know, smokes weed, does drugs, you know, you're going to have to stop those if you want to work in GovTech. Mm. So, it, it, you know, it just depends on you if you want to make that lifestyle change, right? Like, you know, um, I had to completely change my life, right? I was in college living my life. And then when I really wanted to get serious, I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave that stuff behind me. And right. to me, you know, I, I would give it up <laughs> every day of the right. week to be where I am Facts, now, whatever you know? said. <laughs> whatever said. And, and, and so, you know, um, can somebody, right? Because I know a lot of people uh, love to um, have side hustles. Uh, is GovTech one of those things that, you know, not only can you make a lot of money from it, but if you wanted to do something else or have a side hustle, is that possible? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You can yeah. have a side hustle. You do whatever you want, right? Yeah. So you can have a side hustle. You could even create your own um, company and do 1099 work, get your own government contracts or just work as a subcontractor other under other companies. So you can do that as well. But like it's complete freedom. They're, they're not going to tell you like, hey, you can't you can't have this job. You can't do this. You can't do that. Right. Unless, of course, it's like a, a conflict of interest of right. some sort. Right. Like regular company stuff. Right. Right. And it, so what, what's what's the ultimate goal for for Simone B's ultimate goal for me um so I'm working on my own job board mm. yeah so I'm working on my own GovTech job board right now um so really uh my goal is to have jobs listed on there where you know people who are looking to get uh government clearances or get their first GovTech job they can come to my job board they can find it and companies will um start having a pipeline to help you know, blacks and minorities get into GovTech. So that's my ultimate goal really is just to just build out a much larger company that's going to help, you know, thousands and thousands of black people get into GovTech. That, that's always been my goal, right? I, I even have a financial starter kit book, right? And it's about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. I came out with that in 2020. I've, I've been, you know, on this mission for a long time, right? Yeah. People are kind of just now realizing it because of TikTok and Instagram. Right. Yeah. And, and, and talk about that a little bit. Like, like how, how has social media helped you, right? Because mm -hmm. I like, you know, I know you're, you know, you're actually on your way to a black TikTok event. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, like TikTok is helping with, you know, with the message. Like how, how has social media helped you? Um, you know, spread this message. I, I mean, it's just it's just helped me amplify the message, right? Yeah. Like, so it's crazy. I've been on TikTok for a year. Um, I think within my first month on TikTok, which was last August, you know, I had a, a lot of videos going viral. People had never heard of GovTech before, mm. right? So it's just helped me spread my message and help so many people, right? Like, I'm telling you, everywhere I go, people are stopping me saying, hey, you know, you changed my life. Like, I'm in tech now. Um, I got my certifications or I end up going to school. I'm at WGU now. I'm getting my degree. Um, you know, so I've I've changed so many people's lives. And, and that's really all I really want is just help more people get into tech and make six figures. Right. I just feel like I don't I'm sure you know this stat. Right. They said that the average net worth of um, black households is going to be zero dollars by 2053. Yeah. That's what really got me started on this mission. I'm like, man, you know. There's so much opportunity for us. We just don't know about it. Yeah. All right. So listen, y'all, we have an opportunity. You got to spend five days with Simone. Let her talk to you and teach you about how to get into GovTech. Uh, we got a special website specifically for our insiders inside the techchallenge.com. Inside the techchallenge.com. Listen, y'all, join that VIP inside the tech you'll be able to spend five days with Simone and you already know Carter Cofield you spend five days with Carter as well teaching you the tax-free game uh you know learn how to get a job so listen and this is what I'm saying a lot of us are focused on entrepreneurship but what if right you know Storm Leroy says your job is your first business partner 
What if you could get a business part- partner that's paying you six figures, that's recession proof, that's AI proof, and all of the dreams and, and aspirations that you ever had before, you can use the money that you're making from GovTech to fund your dreams. So inside the tech challenge.com if uh people wanted to connect with you outside of that where can they find you hey you can find me on all platforms at simone bees so s-y-m-o-n-e-b-e-e-z um and then also i'm on youtube too and i'm starting a new tech youtube series as well inside the tech challenge.com for our insiders we're gonna we're gonna take this challenge we're gonna get you know figure out what certifications we need to get in order to to start off with our six figures in government tech, y'all. We are closing out the vault. Another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Make sure you visit us inside the vault tv.com. Subscribe to us. Also, follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you visit me, I am Ash Cash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. We all, look, we got some behind the scenes gems that Simone didn't even give us on this episode. So make sure you join the Abundance Community, abundancecommunity.org for exclusive behind the scenes information from Simone B's, the government tech guru herself. Listen, we're closing out the vault. We'll see you next time. Same time, same place in God's will. Peace.